thank you so much for um, taking the time to join me. So I don't typically drink coffee afternoon, so I'm drinking tea now. Um, well, because- sadly, I, 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 I visited the local cookout, so <laughs> this is just unsweet tea. So there we go. Nice, nice. <laughs> so just tell us, um, tell us your name and a little bit about yourself. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Where do I start? Okay. Uh, name's Bob Rimsberg. I work with the Division of State Historic Sites. Started in 1984. <laughs> a long time ago, it seems like. And it was, I guess. Uh, but that wasn't my first history gig. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll back up. I grew up in Winston-Salem. And, uh, of course, like many historian type people, we ended up being dragged by our parents to Civil War battlefields and uh, other museums and places to see. And, and um, my parents were no exception to that. We'd, we'd load up in the Rambler station wagon and, and head wherever. And I think the furthest north I'd ever got with them was like Gettysburg. And um, I don't remember how far south, probably just Myrtle Beach on vacation. But still, um, it was it was pretty neat. We, we, we never had a vacation without a purpose, sort of. It, there's always a, a reason to go see something. But that led into something different. As we got to, in, as I got into high school, and I really did like uh, history classes, uh, social studies, um, political science, those sorts of things that were, were kind of being presented in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and so on. Uh, when I got into high school, my mother had the brilliant idea that they have a little summer program over at Old Salem. So I grew up in Winston-Salem. So it was only a few miles from the house and they would take teenagers and put them in costume to make the town come alive, basically, and give us uh, different roles to play. Uh, and, and we were assigned to, you know, there are different craft locations at, at Old Salem, at least uh, that's kind of how they did part of their interpretation. So we were assigned to a different building or a different craft or a different skill uh, each week. Uh, so after some basic training and indoctrination and what have you, uh, and, and of course, will the costume really fit? Uh, and they had a costume department at the time. And uh, as we look back on it now, the, the quality was, eh, you know, not bad, but it certainly didn't meet, I guess I'll say today's standards. But this was bicentennial time. This is in the, you know, 76, 77. And so they, uh, you know, here I'm in costume. And uh, so I spent the summer at Old Salem in costume and learning about all different crafts. The next summer, uh, a great historian, uh, Bill Hinman, uh, hired me uh, as, <laughs> as the blacksmith. So here I am, I'm, I'm 15, I can't even drive yet, and uh, I'm the outdoor blacksmith at Old Salem. So I, I do this for the next three summers while I'm in high school. In fact, I end up teaching people how to blacksmith. The only thing they gave me was a couple of books, access to the library, and here's the forge um, kind of instructions. It took me half a day to mark, light my first fire. Uh, but I figured it out. And oh uh, black, <laughs> kind of ever since then. But that, that uh, you know, led me into, to, of course, college. I did not work in history during college, but I took every history class I could. I went to Chapel Hill. So uh, that included uh, North Carolina history classes under Bill Powell. So anyone that uh, knows much about North Carolina history and history books is going to run into Bill Powell's name, or William Powell, if we want to call him. He was quite, quite the professor. Uh, first day of class, you always had to fill out uh, a four by six index card with your name, your hometown, who your parents were, and, and some details. Because somewhere during class, one, some class somewhere, he's going to say, well, Mr. Ensberg, you're from Winston-Salem. Tell me how the Moravians would deal with it or something, you know, there'd be something like that. And you're, you're going, ah, I don't know what they would have done. Uh, so anyway. Stressful. <laughs> but he, w- he would do that. And uh, that, w- that was quite the experience. And uh, certainly applaud Bill for that. He was uh, quite, quite the historian. Um, that uh, led me, uh, my degree was in education. I was supposed to be a high school history teacher. Uh, that never exactly happened. Uh, when I came out of uh, uh, Chapel Hill in the education department, you had to, uh, at 1984, you needed to be a football coach to be a history teacher. 
pretty much in high school. It, 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 it just seemed to be that all the all the football coaches were also history teachers. So if I go for a job interview dealing dealing with being a history teacher, you know, the next question was, can you coach football? And I'm like, no, I was in the band. I can't do football. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't do football and, and still can't do football. Don't, don't ask me to throw a football. It will, I don't know where it'll end up. Uh, so, uh, anyhow, uh, that led me to historic sites. Um, and Bill Powell, uh, blame it on him, he advised that I contact, oh boy, I'm going to stretch her name here. I was a professor, ended up being a professor at uh, Meredith. Um, oh, golly, golly. He was... Uh, Bill Price? Yes, thank you. That's the other Bill. Very good. I got in touch with Mr. Pro or Dr. Price, I guess. And, and, and he mm -hmm. pretty quick said, well, we don't have any openings at the Museum of History or anything like that, but there may be some coming up with historic sites. Um, let me send you uh, over to historic sites. So... Um, uh, Ricky Howell was the kind of hiring person at the time for uh, the, the different sites. So I drove over from Chapel Hill. Think, think of this for a second. Drove from Chapel Hill, everything blue and white, to go see Ricky Howell, who's an NC State grad. His chair was red. Yeah. His telephone was red. Oh. Big wolf on the wall, you know, bobblehead or whatever, wolf on the desk. I mean, the whole nine yards. I thought, oh, my gosh, uh, this will never work. <laughs> They'll never hire me. Um, well, we interviewed, and I guess I left a little impression. So he, he advised me and said, I know two positions coming up, one at Brunswick Town, uh, so all the way down, mm -hmm. or Fort Anderson now, Fort Anderson, Brunswick Town, down on the coast, um, and one at uh, coming up in the fall, in September, at Reed Gold Mine. Hmm. Hmm. So I went ahead. The, the The position was a maintenance position. That's how you get started in some of these things um, at uh, at Brunswick Town. So I went down and interviewed uh, at Brunswick Town with uh, Captain Bill Falk, was the, the director of uh, Brunswick Town at the time, uh, and Jimmy Bartley, whose name I'm sure you've heard probably, uh, mm -hmm. was the assistant manager, and went down there. And on the quick tour that Jimmy Bartley gave me around the site got absolutely eaten up by biting flies and mosquitoes. And I had worked some maintenance uh, at a summer camp and I thought, I can't do this. <laughs> I just, I, you know, I love it. Sounds like a great opportunity. It's at the coast. This isn't so bad, but uh, biting flies are not my friend. So uh, I, I actually was offered the position. I turned it down. Back then they could offer you the position like that day. Oh, yeah, no, that doesn't happen I know. anymore. No, you never have today. I mean, <laughs> literally that, you know, I, I, as I was leaving, they said, by the way, if you want the position, let, let us know. And um, I, you know, I called him back with the bad news the next day because the more I thought about it, like, I just know. I'm, let me wait and see. And then I ended up going to Regold Mine and did get the position there. Again, literally almost the same thing. Walked in, got, wasn't even scheduled for the interview. Walked down because I'd never been to Regold Mine. Take, take a tour, see what it was all about. They figured out that I had applied for the job and they called me back in the office and interviewed me. So. <laughs> was that a maintenance position as well? No, it was back then, they called it a building uh, building guide three, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Which, of course, there's no building other than the stamp mill at Regold Mine to, to give a tour of. It's all tours underground. So that's where I started in historic sites. So after my blacksmithing experience at, at Old Salem, then. Uh, by the way, at Old Salem, uh, talking about not getting rich, I, my starting pay uh, that Bill Hemman offered me was $1.40 an hour. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, yeah that, that, I did not get rich at Old Salem. Uh, the funny thing is my mother followed me. She worked at Old Salem for many years after that uh, as, a, as both the guide and in the bakery. So, so her, awesome. her career at, Regal, at, Regal, at uh, Old Salem was after mine. So... Uh, <laughs> Anyhow, that was that was kind of fun. So we, we would compare notes about school groups and things. Uh, That's funny. Yeah. So, uh, but anyhow, that that led me to read gold mine. Worked as a building guide. I did teach school for a while. I left after yeah. two years and about eighteen hundred underground tours. Um, <laughs> I can't. Pardon me. I can't do this. Taught school, then came back as assistant manager. 
then left to become a city administrator and then came back as the manager, but they immediately hired me to be the uh, West region supervisor. So that's kind of how it morphed. So, so I worked, my office was always at Regal Mine. I've been there, was there three, three different times. Wow. <laughs> Wow. And of course, when I was, you know, by the time I got to be the West Region Supervisor, Jimmy Bartley, the guy that gave me that tour at Brunswick Town, was the East Region Supervisor. So we were right. kind of co-workers that way, yet again. So. so at that time, when you were, um, so we have all of our historic sites, and we have our regional supervisors um, that cover, you know, sets of sites. Now we, that's broken down just into two regions. We have East and West. Right. Um, but when I started with historic sites um, in 2009, it was three regions. Right. So was it three regions when you were doing it? When I, when I first started, when I first came on, I, I replaced John Beaver as the West Region Supervisor. So I, so it what there was a Piedmont region. Dale Coates was the uh, mm -hmm. in charge of the, uh, the Piedmont region, and Jimmy Bartley had the P. So it was the three of us uh, there for for a while, and then budget cuts, et cetera. Let's combine, and 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 uh, of course uh, Dale got promoted, and so they just made it the east and the west. Uh, so we, I picked up uh, Brunswick. No way, I did not pick up Brunswick Town. That would have almost been easier to get to. Uh, I picked up House in the Horseshoe, Alamance. Uh, CHP? Town, Town Creek and CHP, yeah, Charles Hogan Brown. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yep. um, so how long were you Western Region Super? Now, I say this because I feel like you're, like, famous. <laughs> I still find your name on paperwork at the site. <laughs> Bless you. I'm so, so sorry. Uh, it, <laughs> I, it's a legacy. It's a thing. I don't know. It uh, is. Um, <laughs> That's a good question. For 2004, I think that's right, 2004 or 5, until I retired 2014. So just 10 years, 10, 11 years. So that's, so, long enough to, that's long enough to make a mark in historic times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how... I guess, how many managers would you have worked with at the Vance birthplace as a regional supervisor? Probably David and Chris. David and Chris. Um, let's see, who came, uh, who was after Chris? Michael Moore. No, I did, I was, I, I was gone by, by then, so that's right. Chris, Chris had let, gone to teach by then. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think, I think I, about the same time I retired is when Chris went to teach. I mm -hmm. think may have, in fact, the position may have been vacant at that point, but I, no, I didn't work with Michael. Um, yeah. Now, um, when you were regional supervisor, mm -hmm. what would like your average day look like? Well, there was no average day. Uh, <laughs> no, really, I mean, the, the, the hard part about being a regional supervisor is, is you deal a lot with personnel. So, so that was, you know, when my love was kind of interpreting and teaching, uh, you know, then suddenly I'm having to deal with personnel issues. But the good news is most of the staff was great. So one of the things we um, have talked about with, uh, on quarantine historians is really, you know, obviously there's been a big shift with the pandemic to doing more virtual programming, but even just interpretation in general, there are these shifts that happen sometimes as people continue to try and um, think about how they can do their job better and just constantly evolving and changing more. So I'm interested as someone who worked with historic sites, you know, from working at Reed Goldmine, being a Western regional supervisor, just, you know, some of your thoughts around the changing field, like some of the changes that you, you saw over the years, um, some of your experiences in well, I, museum I, I, interpretation. I, I, yeah, <laughs> well, and, and I'll, I'll, this isn't exactly interpret. Well, it is interpretation in a way. I, I will say this, I, I make, and, and don't mean to disparage the folks at Old Salem back in the day, but, but I'll, I'll, in costuming, for instance, I mean, that's, that's, that's a, initial thing is the accuracy of, of what uh, a reenactor uh, or, or even a, a guide uh, at, at almost any place will, will present. And so I think that's, uh, and, and with 
Division of Historic Sites, I mean, we were cash poor in many cases. So, so sometimes we're, we're, we're costuming was questionable um, mm-hmm. in, back in the day. There was always the debate at Old Salem of was it appropriate to wear name tags with your costume or not? So, <laughs> as, as if Governor Tryon went around wearing a name tag. I don't know. That was, <laughs> Yeah, but we did. Yeah, but we did. We wore name tags uh, on, mm-hmm. on top of our costume, tri-cornered hat, the whole nine yards, but a you know plastic name tag. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that was, you know, that was considered appropriate. Um, you know, and I look back at my my old uh, leather shoes that the Tim Smith actually made buckles to make fit, even though they're really not period buckles style correct at all. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, it was nice, mm-hmm. but it wasn't quite right. So start with that but there's so many challenges um you know changing (laughs) not to 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 get political (laughs) on this but but the whole idea that you know history should be taught the way it was taught to us when we were kids back in the 60s 70s 50s whatever you know that american history doesn't change well that's that's not true uh Mm -hmm. they're they're just you know, our interpretation, our, our view of it, uh, the accuracy of it uh, has changed. The challenge, advance is a great example. How do you interpret the slave cabin? What do you do with those difficult subjects and topics? And I watched that kind of evolve, advance, you know, while I was there, uh, or, you know, as West Supervisor, because uh, that was one of the challenges that, that David Tate and, and Chris, I'm sure Mr. Moore and so on face is, how do and you face? How do we how do we deal with those kind of more difficult, dicey sort of subjects? And what's the right way to tell that story? Um, it's come a long ways. It's the accuracy, the the I don't know, just just and the the truth of it is is a lot clearer where it was glossed over. Even at Re Gold Mine, um, wonderful for, for nineteen Visitor Center opened in nineteen seventy seven. Pretty good displays considering the time. There was one small panel on the African American experience at Regal Mine. But mm-hmm. slaves were there. John Reed had like 18 slaves. Mm-hmm. No mention of that, or was no mention of that in the visitor center at the time. Nowadays, mm-hmm. that you know that needs to be and should be a, a considerable part of the tour, people to understand what things were really like at the Reed mm-hmm. Farm and and of course the the uh, Discovery Gold, we touched on it a little bit because one of the largest nuggets ever found in the eastern United States was found there, largest nugget of gold, and, and found by uh, one of the slaves. Um, so it's a great story, a 28-pound gold nugget, not, not a bad haul, but, you know, the, but there's some stories that go around. I often told that on tour uh, mm-hmm. at the gold mine, but it, uh, you know, of course, and that's one of those, you wish you knew more. You only have a little bit about Peter the slave, so mm-hmm. it would be be so nice to know. And and even people like John Reed himself, who was, you know, grew up in Germany as a, as a uh, illegit- illegitimate uh, child, and we didn't know that originally, um, and uh, would have been in a very poor situation. It explains totally explains why he didn't uh, go back to Germany. He deserted the British army as a Hessian soldier and uh, stayed and found this German uh, part of North Carolina and settled there. Yeah, I think um, like what you were saying about, you know, history and how we teach it and it changing. Um, I think sometimes we, our, our visitors expect us, they're like, you know, everything. So, you know, it can't change. Right. Like, and I'm like, well, we find new documents. Like they're, right. There's additional research that can always be done. And once in a while, someone will say, hey, look, <laughs> look what I found. This yeah. might be important to you. And suddenly you've got this whole wealth. That, I know that happened at Reed Goldmine. We, I had a call from Charlotte Library um, while I, was, I guess while I was assistant manager. So it was a long time ago. And we have some papers that someone donated. They found them in a trunk in the attic of an old house here in Charlotte, and it seems to all talk about Reed Goldmine. Well, it was all letters that had been written um, by someone working at the mine to an investor who lived 
in Charlotte. And he had saved all those letters from this uh, person who was working at, and really running the gold mine and begging for more money and explaining how things were, what things were like, how things were. We didn't have any of that, but it, they showed up in the library in Charlotte. And luckily they realized what they had and uh, the McCombs letters were born and, and some, some good folks at Lee Gold Mine, uh, Kimberly Hewitt and other, you know, spent some time to uh, review all that and, you know, condense all that material. And a lot of great stuff and um, added a lot to the history. Can really change the trajectory of a site. The challenge, I, see, when I first started uh, and associated with Vance, of course, the, the exhibits were still, you know, the exhibits from 1964 or whatever. Uh, <laughs> oh, I remember those. Those were there until like 2016. Well, exactly. And, 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 you know, even painted and cleaned up or whatever. I have to think, I haven't, and I can't remember what all they said, but I have to think there were some things on there that probably wouldn't, wouldn't have even passed muster in 1976, much less, you know, 2006 or whatever. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes things get, no, oh, well, written in stone, and it's hard to, to change. And sometimes, I, I think the one of the, the funniest things, of course, and I know you've been trained this way uh, to, to watch out for this, is when when a guy, especially someone that's new, um, hears something or says something, and then they hear someone else say something a little different, and then a visitor throws this in, and suddenly your interpretation is wrong. You're 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 telling what the visitor told. And it turns out that's not correct. And, and that's mm -hmm. something that's always fun to have to watch. And I know that was always a challenge for us at, at, at Reed Goldmine. Uh, but I think every site faces this old sailor face that too. You know, it's, it's, you know, the, the story gets twisted. That's where you get the, you know, the closet tax and the <sighs> last tax, those, those sorts of crazy things that are like, you know, that really didn't exist. <laughs> but yeah. Makes good, makes, makes good history. Sounds, makes a good story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, um, there was a book that came out when I was in grad school. I mean, I think it's been oh, 10 yeah. years now, but Death by a Petticoat. Did you ever read oh, that yeah. one? Yes, okay. <laughs> and that one talks about that. Like, I think the closet tax, it talks about like, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Right. All yeah. those myths and things that get started. It reminds me of that telephone game, you know, where you like whisper oh, yeah. and you go around and you see like the person at the end has to say what the first person said and it's never exactly never the, same. the same. It's easy to fall into those um, things when you started a site and you get busy and you're planning right. events and you don't have time to go dig again. Um, but that is something that is, you know, helpful. It's kind of like people advance. Um, we will say, you know, when we go on tour, we're going to be talking about early 1800s um, plantation and the mountains, what that would have looked like, you know, similarities and differences between mountain plantations and what you might be picturing in your mind, that kind of thing. It's and we're talking. <laughs> yeah. And people are like, well, plantations, like this wasn't a plantation. And, um, you know, I was really struggling helping people to understand that. And one time someone um, said it on our social media said, it's not a plantation. Why do you keep using the word plantation? And David Tate, bless yeah. him. Yes. Yeah. Before I could even have to deal with it, this is like so wonderful because it helps the staff when people do this. But David said, well, it is a plantation and David Vance Sr. actually called it a plantation in his will. And I was, I was like, did he? And I thought about it and I was like, I've read his will so many times and I never even paid attention. So I pull out David Vance Sr.'s will because I'm like, David Tate said it. it. Must be true. So I pulled it out and I read it and I was like, you know what? Dave is right. He did say plantation. And I was like, I've been sitting here struggling to like, port, like relay this information to help people understand that, that it was in fact a plantation just based on what I'm saying. And I'm like, no, no, but he actually calls it that himself. Right. That's good. That's good. Some, sometimes us old folks come in handy. Yeah. I was like, David's done that more than once. And I'm like, thanks, David. Oh, he, 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 he knows this stuff. I just, he, he really does. He, he was he was an expert. New new ins and outs of Vance, that's for sure. Yeah. Have any interesting memories, stories that stick out to you? Hmm. Well, <laughs> just, I, I mean, having given so many underground tours, <laughs> oh gosh, um, 
I mean, they're, they're, guys, there are all sorts of strange things that happen. And, and visitor interactions, I mean, I, everything from the, the, I'll, I'll, I'll work in the front desk sort of when someone comes in and you, and, and you know, the first question I always ask is where's the bathroom? And, and then you have to look at it. once in a while you'll, you'll think these people can take a joke and you go bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bathroom. And of course at Reed Goldmine, the bathrooms are on the porch. So, you know, that then your next answer was, well, they're on the porch and the people are like, what? Why are the bathrooms on the porch? But yeah. You know, um, so, that's, so that, that's always kind of fun, but uh, I can remember giving a tour. I think it was a school group, you know, and you're underground, so you have you know these light fixtures around and turn literally turn the corners. I'm talking, and of course, have have a, a moth fly into your mouth. Oh. Like, well, pah, I can't, you know, uh, give me a minute, I can't talk now. Oh, <laughs> But you know, it's, it's wild. And of course, being you know, we've all probably run into critters in the houses and what have you. We, you know, but at the gold mine, being underground, you know, the snakes would would wander in once in a while. Usually black snakes, so not a big problem. But uh, but it's still and bats, of course. So. Bats. <laughs> I've seen some bats. <laughs> I, yeah, a lot of our old houses will have bats. Uh, it's one of the challenges was um, dealing with. Uh, the age of rocks, um, <laughs> you know, uh, the rocks uh, tend to be, you know, 600 million years old or 300 million years old, depending on the type at Rio Mine, and you're, but that's not acceptable to all people. Um, so, so I, I had, I had to change over the years. How I had dealt with that, but uh, if, if I was challenged that, no, the earth is only 5,000 years old, um, I, I used to, I used to come back and I, I would never do this now, I don't think, but I've come back and say something. Well, yeah, that may be true because if you believe God's all powerful, then He can make the rocks look however old He wants them to. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, I, are they only 5,000 year old rocks or 600 million years? I don't know if God's all powerful. <laughs> so, whatever. None of our historic sites have a perfect past, I guess. Um, whether you deal with scalping at Fort Dobbs or or um, uh, slavery at uh, President Polk. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, everywhere. It's, um, people were, are not and were not perfect. That would be the challenge, I think, of interpretation today is making it interesting enough to capture the, the, the school tours. Right. Um, right. Keep, keep yeah. Going engaged and involved when they're used to getting information at, you know, thousand miles an hour. Uh, so it, there, there were some days it was all hands on deck and the bathrooms were a disaster at the end of the day. Uh, so we still had to clean the bathrooms. So yeah, yeah that hasn't changed either. Okay. Uh, it's still all hands on deck with the bathrooms and it's still at the end of the day, if there's been school groups, like I don't understand why everything is wet, but everything <laughs> is wet. <laughs> I do feel like, so often you, people talk about historic sites in the 1980s and it comes across like it was the golden years. There were buses down the street. There were thousands of children like running to get into our sites. And I'm like, is that real? <laughs> yeah, it, it was in some ways because, but, but schools were, schools were freer to take field trips and, and give kids the experience. And I, and I, kind of sad that that's not so much the case anymore certainly during the pandemic but even take that away and it had gone away a lot partly because of the cost of, of them you know paying for the buses and getting everyone out um but i think the emphasis became so much more on, on and of course testing or in grade testing and and meeting certain curricular goals you get my violin out again back in my day when you were in Back in elementary school days, you know, it was it was partly about the experiences that your teachers could provide to you, and some of those experiences did involve getting in a bus, and Miss Frizzle, and you know whatever, you know, kind of getting in the bus and going out and, and and seeing different things that kids, depending on their background, may not have seen. Not all of us had parents that would load the station wagon up and take us to Civil War battlegrounds. So, you know, 
it's sad to me in a way that kids don't get those experiences as much, I think, as they used to. Now, I know you probably can't say this on the record, mm. but when you were regional supervisor, did you have a favorite site? <laughs> oh, tough one. Oh, gosh. You know, that you expect me to say this, and so I will. They were all unique. I mean, everyone, <laughs> each one had their, each one had their, I, I, I mean, really, I mean, they, they did, though. I mean, from dealing with Thomas Wolfe and, and just, I mean, yeah. these were all unique individuals. We're dealing with uh, Zeb Vance or Tom Wolfe or, or uh, uh, you know, the, I mean, all the Native Americans at Town Creek. I mean, everyone had it has a fascinating story. I mean, your story is not different from others I've heard in the what? field where you start as a main, like Dale Coates started as maintenance at Duke Constant yeah, and eventually became right. the site manager and regional supervisor and then deputy director. And it's like, that doesn't really happen um, as much anymore. <clears throat> it's like the, the process is different. You know, you have to go get your master's degree now. And it's, you know, um, I would say the salaries haven't kept up with those requirements. <laughs> Absolutely but, not. Um, you know, I'm interested to know what kind of advice you would give to someone who's interested in working in museums and historic sites. Um, you know, they're always, people are always being told to go get their master's degree now, but if there's something else that could help them prepare, um, I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are around that. Blacksmith at uh, Old Salem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, <laughs> I like it. I mean, <laughs> well, I <like> it. <laughs> but, but, but I mean, it, okay. So it depends, I guess I'll say it depends on your age. If you, if you were still, you know, that, that high school student or whatever and thinking, you know, this is kind of neat stuff. I like public history. Kind of, then, then yeah, volunteer or work part-time at, at a historic site. Get, get, learn if you really do like doing that. Um, yeah, I, I watched it change. It even changed when I was in because I, I was, the person I replaced at Reed Goldmine when I came in left Reed Goldmine to go to NC State to get her degree, undergraduate degree. So she, she was a high school grad. So I came in as a college grad, uh, you know, in that position. So already the, the, the creep of, of academia was, was moving up in, in this sort of world. But, you know, I, I would I start with, you know, again, if you're young enough, start off with volunteering or working part time. Uh, yeah, I don't, you know, sadly, yes, you're going to probably have to get to that master's degree level nowadays to certainly to move up in the field. Um, and yes, there were, I know, even uh, several folks that worked at Reed Goldmine with their masters, uh, even as interpreters in the job that I had had as an as a undergraduate uh, person. So, hmm. It just varied experiences. Do what you can. Uh, learn a craft like blacksmithing or, or some. I mean, I think that's kind of neat. Pottery. So, I mean, some, some of those skills, weaving and sewing, they're, they're, that's going to help your interpretation, if, especially if that's what you're doing. Uh, if you fall into an interpretive role, uh, it can't all be research. <laughs> uh, that, yeah. That's a component. You need to be able to do that, but that that's. Uh, um, that's that's not just it. It's being able to kind of hands on, because that's what the visitors are going to want too. They're going to be able to, so so. And in historic sites, as we know, that is sometimes all hands on deck. So a special event day, you know, you might be able to run around and be the person in charge. But on the other hand, you may be needing to operate the the die pot or yeah. uh, <laughs> or demonstrate the loom or what have you. So. So there's, you know, you need a, a variety of skills that are not practical. And believe me, at the end of the day, whether you have a master's degree or a doctorate or an undergrad degree or manage to get out of high school, you'll still be cleaning the bathroom. <laughs> I think that <laughs> I think that may be the perfect way to end this <laughs> because it's so true um or you know you might end up at a site it's like stagville they had chickens and there were saturdays when i was trying to leave work and it's like 5 30 and it started raining and those stupid chickens wouldn't get in a coop and i'm like running around chasing a chicken yeah. and i'm like i got my master's degree like i get i am a you know historian and i am chasing a chicken <laughs> just what? 
It knocks you down a peg, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it really does. <laughs> Nothing like cleaning a bathroom that does no. that too. Mm -hmm. Well, it, we're all human. I, I, I'll, I'll yeah. <laughs> think again, go back to Old Salem for a minute. Um, the Moravians have, and I'm not Moravian, but uh, the Moravians have a great tradition and that when you die, you're buried next to the person who died last. So if you ever visit, if you ever visit God's Acre, uh, you know, everyone has the same size headstone. <laughs> so no matter whether they had their doctorate or whether they had, you know, they, they, they finished grade school, they're, they're all lined up beside each other. So it, yeah. uh, yeah, it, in the end, does it really matter? I don't know. But, uh, you know. <laughs> no, it's such a good point you make because, you know, it really is. And I, because I, you know, didn't, I've had some jobs where I haven't had to do, you know, more of the hands on type stuff. And, you know, honestly, um, I did at Mordecai, but not as much at the City of Raleigh Museum and not not honestly as much at Staggill, but like now it's full in. Like I have to work the loom and there are times like with school groups when I'm using the shape horse or starting a fire or cooking biscuits over the fireplace. Like there's just things that I, you know, and I'm 14 years in to the field and I'm still doing that and I'm still yeah. cleaning bathrooms. So um, you are exactly right. Yeah. I think that's wonderful advice. <laughs> Well, that's it's reality, and uh, just always focus on reality of things. And, and uh, but uh, and and research, I, I will throw that out. I mean, it's st more thing as we talked about, more things keep showing up. So uh, don't don't ever stop learning. There's always more to add, and that's that was my hardest part at Regal Mine is was how do I keep that tour short? Yeah. But you keep gaining more information, and you won't you won't to share it. Mm -hmm. Especially if you have an interested visitor, you just keep you just want to keep gushing it all out, and, <laughs> and um, uh, sometimes you got to know when to stop. But but, <laughs> but then again, that's uh, my wife calls me a well of useless knowledge, so that's that's probably uh, gen generally useless, but but a lot of fun. Yeah, and this has been fun. Yeah, I really appreciate your time today and for talking to me about your story and public history and museums and um, we'll have to we'll catch up again um, sure. another time and I just I hope you have a really good rest of the day I'll do my best and hopefully I'll be up to Vance at some point and uh, get to, to revisit the site and enjoy the new exhibits and and uh, maybe you'll be making biscuits that day I don't know oh gosh I don't know if you want to eat them but <laughs> That'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I will talk to you later. Thanks again. Right. Thank you. Take care.